Hey, good morning. Uh, from Solder Smoke Headquarters in Rome, Italy, this is Bill Mara, N2CQR, also known as M0HBR. I'd like to thank the organizers of the RSPGB convention, especially Brian, G8, G8 OSN, for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. I had hoped to come up and be there for the convention, uh, but it just didn't work out and I couldn't get away, so we're going to have to make do with a, a virtual presence. And given the fact that we're all uh, victims of the NAC and uh, technically oriented people, that somehow seems appropriate. Um, I really wish I was at the, uh, at the rally, or what we'd call the ham fest uh, today. Uh, the ham fests and rally is very important to me, as they are to all radio amateurs, as they are to all true NAC victims. And I started going to, uh, to ham fests in the United States as a, as a, as a teenager. Um, I'd like to share with you <laughs> a quote about ham fests, and I'm sure this applies to rallies also. This is from, uh, from Gene Shepard the great American uh, humorist, author, and, um, and comedian, who was also uh, uh, an amateur radio operator. His, uh, his last call sign was K2ORS. Let me see if I can get you the, uh, the quote. There we are. Gene Shepard, 1968. I have this in the book, Solder Smoke. Where am I? There we go. I have this in the book, Solder Smoke, A Global Adventure in Radio Electronics. And I have one, one section on on rallies and ham fests, and I, I, I have here, a ham fest is essentially a flea market for radio fiends. Gene Shepard wrote that around, at around the age of 12, people come to a crossroads. And Shepard says, and I quote, one path leads to success, the other to ham radio flea markets. <laughs> Gentlemen, I guess we're on the second path. <laughs> um, you know, I, I thought a little bit about may, maybe making some comments about how U.S. ham fests differ from, from U.K. rallies. And when I started going to the Kempton Park rally near London, I was immediately struck by the fact that our British cousins began their ham fests at a far more civilized hour. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that shouldn't come as a surprise. Um, just it was generally much more, I guess, civilized is the word. In the States, you, um, you, you better be there. If you want to get any of the good stuff, you better be there at what we would refer to as uh, O-Dark 30. And I can remember getting to many of the, uh, the, the especially the winter uh, uh, flea markets in, in the States and arriving before, before dawn and finding myself already in competition with uh, some very eager uh, other, some other uh, radio amateurs were very eager to find find the really good stuff. Um, you know, in this, in this, I don't know if it applies in the UK, but in the states, the rule is if you if you keep your hand on a piece of equipment while you're discussing its characteristics with the owner, then you, you sort of maintain uh, rights to be the to be the purchaser. Um, <laughs> I, I have a, a friend in in Virginia who, uh, when he went around in the flea markets. He would always ask the um, the owners of the equipment, "Does it work?" And you know, very often they were honest with them, and they said, yeah, "No, it, this this piece of equipment hasn't worked since the Great Depression." <laughs> um, and even then, it didn't work very well. But um, whenever he was told that that a piece of equipment didn't work, he would he would surprise the owner by immediately replying, "Good, I pay extra for that." Of course, um, I think uh, this will everyone in the audience will probably understand why he pays extra for that, because of course it gave him the opportunity to fix it, the uh, the thrill of the hunt, the uh, the joy of the troubleshoot. That's what he was after. So uh, yeah, I remember he paid extra for that. I often thought that it, at rallies, and this is a, something I observed both at U.S. Hamfest and at U.K. rallies. I often thought that. Instead of wearing our name tags, you know, on our shirts or up on our hats, you know, we should have them actually, or maybe perhaps have an extra set, uh, on the, the tips of our shoes. And this is especially important for technically oriented radio amateurs and, and for knack victims, because we spend most of our time at these rallies not in 
harmonious social interaction with our fellow radio amateurs. No. We spend most of our we spend most of our time at these conventions looking down at the cardboard boxes underneath the tables at the flea market. And you know, you're 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 looking through these boxes where all the good stuff is, and you're you, you, what, you, what you mostly see of your fellow radio amateurs is their shoes. So, you know, you could be standing right next to your old friend, John, who you built that, that wonderful 6L6 transmitter with, you know, 25 years ago. You wouldn't even know because you are so intent on finding that high current RF choke that you need for your current project that you don't know. But if you look down there, you saw his shoe and you saw his, his name and call sign, well, there's a chance that you might actually get together. So um, that's one of my proposals. I think we need name tags uh, for shoes. Um, Kempton Park was the rally that I went to uh, when we lived in the UK, and I, uh, I enjoyed it very much. It was easy to get to from our, um, our, our location in central London. Uh, my son Billy often went along with me. It was a twice-a-year rally. Uh, we went both to the spring and the, uh, and the fall versions of it. Billy used to bring along his uh, skateboard, and because uh, Kempton Park is a racetrack, uh, it's got some really good sloping areas out in the back, and when Billy would get, get a bit tired of the electronics, we'd go out and he'd, do, he'd be very happily skateboarding along the, um, uh, the I guess, the outside area of, of the Kempton Park uh, racetrack. I, I always remember Kempton Park because that's where I met uh, Tony Fishpool, one of the true greats of the... Uh, of the GQRP club and, and, and UK uh, amateur radio and, and Tony and I um, met up at one of the Kempton Park rallies and he, uh, he, he gave me a copy of his book on, um, on test gear and showed me some of the amazing devices that he had fitted into, um, into um, the, uh, the Altoids tins. So it was really, really great to meet, meet up with Tony there and it's always part of the fond memories that I have. Of, uh, of the Campton Park rallies. All right, I'm going to have to break this because we're sending this to you via YouTube. So this is the end of part one. Stand by for part two.